Hey, today I'm taking a look at the Humvee because the last time I had it out on the trail, the steering was really not happy. Um, first time I've ever experienced anything like that. Steering's always been great, nice, tight, lots of power boost. Basically what's happening is it's feeling notchy. It's, it's just not, it's not playing nice. Um, second before last time I was out, I did a, you know, pretty deep water crossing and I also ran into a bunch of rocks. Turn it, you're hitting the front. Beat you're the, uh, on a rock here. Bad. I hurt my floor. Deeply embarrassed of this. Hurt my floor, bent up my rocker. Uh, that's what rock sliders will prevent. I don't have any. Anyway, so we took it out last weekend. Beautiful, go, go back, watch my video. We went up Hatcher Pass and we went down to a place called Craigie Creek Trail. On the way out there, I noticed my steering was feeling strange. Seem to steer okay to the left from center, but from center to right, it's taking a little extra effort. And it seemed the more I drove it, the more and more effort that it was requiring. Went off road, wasn't a big deal, uh, but it didn't feel didn't feel good even off road. Uh, got back, I was going up over a mountain pass. Thank goodness, going very slow, but steering was just not right. So when you go to the right, you have to kind of put extra pressure and then help it come back to center even at 55 miles an hour, which normally, even if you lost your power steering at 55 miles an hour, should be pretty light, pretty easy. Um, taking a look at it, the power steering pump is not whining or moaning like it's under any strain. The power brakes are continuing to work. For those that don't know, vehicles that have a hydro boost like the Humvee use power steering fluid for both the power brakes as well as the steering. Kind of weird, but it's the way it is. Um, I've got it up in the air, I'm looking at it, and I just noticed if I, I don't think that idle arm is supposed to pop up and down like that. That that doesn't look good. Got lots of play in there. This tight rod actually from here to here is doing like I would expect it, but that's, that's not good. And uh, over here on the Pitman arm, which is the one that comes directly off the steering right here. It is, that's not good. That's not good. You know, is that my problem? I don't know. Maybe, maybe the wheels are kind of fighting each other. So um, I think, I think it's gonna be time to, and, and no, by the way, after doing that water crossing and going over all those rocks and stuff, I did come back, I changed all the oil in the hubs and the gearboxes, you know, just change the transmission, change the transmi uh, the transfer case. I didn't find any signs of water, but I also greased every fitting. You can see the fresh grease spewing out right there because some of the boots are broken. I said to myself then, um, probably coming up soon on needing tie rods or something, but you know, that's that's just too much. So I'm thinking that could certainly be contributing or it could have broke those down with whatever bind is going on here. So I'm going to get on, get online, check with a couple of my parts suppliers, see who has a you know, good deal on those. And we'll go from there. I'll see you after I've ordered some parts and thrown them at it. All right, we're gonna to try to fix this steering problem on the Humvee with some parts from Midwest Military Equipment. This just came the other day. Box, we have the necessary parts to replace the, the immediate wear items in your steering. This is something called an idler arm, and that is what you can see going up and down as I'm wiggling the steering. There's tremendous amounts of play in it right here, and there's too much play in it right here. Um, this is your Pitman arm. This is what directly attaches to the steering gear and it has a joint here that goes into the um, the drag link that goes across and I want to put that back in because the zerk fitting is in there. And then you have your tie rod ends. Your tie rod ends are labeled left hand right hand thread because they are left hand right hand thread to work with the little sleeve that goes on here and do what they do. Let's come in here and take a look at this mess. So we get some dirty cruddy. Parts down here. 
this right here keeps this pin this pin right here keeps the nut from backing out dirty 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 Now, um, I'm not going to reuse these tie rod ends, so I'm not really worried about messing up the threads. However, if I was going to be putting them back on, we can screw the castle nut back on and then sometimes get lucky. Like that and your joint will come out. That wasn't bad. This one, a little harder to get to in there, thanks to, you know, stuff. But what we'll do here, we'll give it a wrap tap and see if it wants to it doesn't want to jump out easy there, and by beating on it, I'm actually ultimately beating against my steering gear, which beats against the uh, seal in the bottom, and I've replaced the steering gear already. You don't want to know what those cost. There it is. So that is our tie rod for the side. Now we have to figure out how we're going to get a hard measurement on it to make sure that my replacement one, when I replace the ends, that they fit exactly right. There are a lot of ways that people have to measure tie rods and try to duplicate it. There are a lot of ways. They don't all work on this, unfortunately. Uh, typically, you'll have a, um, the tie rods will be facing the same direction and you'll have a grease zerk fitting out here and you could just take your tape measure and zoop, you know measure it and then adjust it until you get the same setting we don't have that here um, theoretically you could do something across here but they're you know they're not shaped in a way that's that's makes a lot of sense for hooking up your tape measure um, you could count threads that's a popular way count the number of exposed threads on both ends um, that's another thing to do I was looking very carefully at my replacement tie rod, and it looks, it really looks at first glance exactly the same. And then I look a little bit closer, and it's slightly different. There's no markings on these, where they're made, or what brand they are, or whatever, so I, I don't know. Um, but what I did do is I, I took my caliper gauge and measured to, make, to see what our, you know, our total diameter is of it, and it's the same. So the, this housing... It's the same size. We're going to utilize this lovely piece of pressure treat ground contact 2x4. A couple of um, pieces of 2x4 over here. And I'm going to create a backstop and some markings. And that will give me, I don't even have to get a tape measure out. I'm just going to build it all in here and screw it together. And make sure then that I know how this fits. You'll see what I'm doing. And then we'll set it up again in a moment. I'll be able to tear all this apart and I should be able to get it back pretty darn close. Okay, so we have our super sophisticated tie rod alignment tool. Uh, this is our left hand side. This is actually the inner tie rod. This is backwards, I know, from where you're sitting at home watching it. This would be inside, you know, this would be the engine side. I guess it's not backwards, it depends on your perspective, right? So if I'm at the front bumper looking uh, back at the truck, outer, inner, this is the left-hand driver's side, this sleeve lock goes down, this sleeve lock goes up, this end of the um, tie rod goes up, and that one goes that way. So those are just my little bitty, little bitty notes that I need to look at before I start taking it apart. But again, the idea is that we will get these guys on that sleeve and adjusted to where it sits in this exact same spot. It's a good tight fit. There it is. Drops in. You've got this little additional lip on both sides to create a stop. And that, my friends, is a sophisticated 
tie rod tool. Selection that you have, that you need to take advantage of is put some anti-seize compound on your sleeve. The good news is that that one came out really easily. Surprise me because I personally have had this truck underwater in these areas um, where, you know, obviously this thing would have gotten filled with with water and uh, yeah, baby. So my left hander. All right, students, what are we going to do? We're going to lube it up. This is always confusing to me. Tell your brain to work the other way. And now I'm going to tighten this guy by going backwards. How about that? Feels pretty good. Okay. There we go. I mean, what else you want? It's adjusted. Sit in the same spot. Sit in the same spot. So now I'm going to tighten down my lockers. This one's ready to go back on the truck whenever we're ready. I'm going to snag a little grease. I got it everywhere. Take some off this sway bar here. And put it in there. Why not, right? Okay. Get out. Normally, you, you know, you put a you put a socket wrench on it, but the sway bar is right there. All right, gonna work on this, and then I'll get back to. Here's our good old drag link, and I know you would have done it differently. You would have taken this off in the car, car, truck, whatever. That's what I probably should have done, but I didn't. I got some chicken pot pie in the, in the uh, oven that I'm getting pretty hungry for. So we're gonna get this guy. Same old, same old. Um, it's probably the same size socket we had before. Come on, baby. If you guys were drinkers and it was a drinking game, take a sip every time I say steering gear. Okay, now don't do that, because then then uh, you won't be around to watch the end of the video. Right, let's get this. Well, okay, that's good. No, that's not good. Uh, crap. Well, that's not the issue. I thought maybe I was going to take that off and then some, you know, it was going to like fall right out but mm -hmm. let's just see for look at that man i don't know my own strength do i okay shoe let's see if this one does like that probably not oh wow all right i'm gonna keep that in that direction so apparently that's the direction it goes and uh you know, this comes up from the bottom, and I think that one went from the top, whatever. I'm going to go get some pot pie. That's enough of this for now. Let's see? Can you see what I see? Let's see. I'm going to put this replacement... Oh, yeah. Well, at least the dirt isn't falling in your eyeball like it is my eyeball. Um, anyway. Let's go ahead and put it in so it's in. 
and then I can just set the drag link in place. I've got a couple of, whoops, it's important to put it in the right hole. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Anyway, uh, now that I've penetrated the correct hole and or hole, since there's two here, that's loosely sitting in place and uh, I'm going to tighten them up. Yeah. Who named these things? Pitman arm. Idler arm makes perfect sense to me. Pitman arm. Pit maneuver. I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Let me just show you what's going on. This is the original Pitman arm. And we've got some play. It's loose. And a replacement one should be tight. Can't move anything in there. That's what you want. Now, these two are designed slightly differently. Got a hump in this one, and that one's straight. Um, the size of this joint seems to be smaller on this one than that one. But this is the one they sent me as the replacement for these models. Oh, so hopefully it's correct. But you know, there's one thing that you've been really worried about. How in the world am I going to put this back on in the same orientation with all those little grooves in there? Well, guess what? There are four indexed larger teeth of all the teeth in here that correspond with four indexed larger slots on the shaft. So I know my steering wheels is straight right now, you know, essentially straight. I didn't turn it or do anything with it when I pulled this down. And when I put this back on, it can only go really, I mean, I guess it can go four ways, right? It could go four different ways, but I know it's got to go forward uh, to grab it. We're going to be able to put this on exactly like that one came off. So I'm going to slip down there and put it on and tighten the nut up. But before I do, I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of anti-seize compound because I'll probably be doing this again before too long, who knows. And uh, there we go. I mean, like I said, that's got the four, the four notches that we needed to make it happen. And what's going on? Okay. Getting this thing, getting this thing put on permanent. Ain't no big deal. One thing, more is better, right? Ooh, I think. Ah, yeah, gave that the, I had sound effects when I did that one, so I know, I know that's right on. And get this guy put in and, and tighten that one up. And then that's drag link is in, tie rods in. And, uh, yeah, something like that. There was a washer on the outboard one on both sides, so I'm putting it back. The replacement one did not come with a washer, but hey, it was there. Let's pump these full of some grease, get the wheels on it, and find out if I accomplished anything. Well, you know we're getting to the end of this road when we're greasing it. These, uh, here we go. Make sure you save your Zerk fittings off your old joints because I have just learned that the straight down one that comes with this particular idler arm does not work because it puts it right Right here trying to get your grease gun on so anyway i just took that one off that one actually came off a tie rod in the i have good news and i have bad news the good news is there's no more slack in the steering uh so anyway i don't know i went ahead and finished putting it together as you saw and took it out for a drive moved it around in here and it's still really tight so i am baffled i'm baffled um 
The steering gear, I replaced it a couple years ago because of leaking. That'll be the hundredth time I've said that in this video. It's been functioning, and there's been no direct impact to that. Because the steering has the same degree of tight, whether the engine's on or off, whether the wheels are on the ground or up in the air, it tells me that the resistance is somewhere north of the power-assisted side. Anyway, I'm going to get in here and take things back apart and check out the linkage from the steering wheel down to the steering gear in hopes that maybe I've got something tight in one of those U-joints and maybe that's the problem. It's not going to be, but I'm going to check it to ultimately come to the conclusion that the steering gear is hosed. So uh, let me get started on part two now of hunting down the problem. I don't know if this is good news or bad news. I don't know. But I just removed the bolt that pinches this intermediate shaft to the steering gear. And I'm like, hey, that feels good. I turn, it's turning. I'm like, this is sweet. But I can't, this thing doesn't want to turn. This, this one doesn't want to pivot. That's it right there. I mean, I can pivot it, but it's extremely stiff, which explains kind of the odd drag that's on it. So now that that's out, let's get the uh, light over here. I guess I'm going to have to pull the, uh, as usual, see, this is why, goodness gracious, if you watch any of my other videos where I'm really working on this truck, you'll see how I complain. You see those nuts on the back of that rubber boot right there? You have to have two people. You have to have one here and one there, and I am an army of one right now. Come on, that's false app. Army, that's false advertising. If you're an army of one, you can't do this. Anyway, uh, why they didn't thread the body, put a nut plate in there, I don't know. <clears throat> but it looks like I've got to take this dust boot, that rubber boot off in order to get the rest of this out. I'm going to go inside and see. Come on. Yeah, so there's your... There's your perfect, your four bolts here, but, oh my goodness. Oh, here's your shaft. It's out. See how nice that just, bloop, bloop. And then this guy is frozen in this direction. And I see there is a grease fitting on here that I've been missing. Shame on me. If you got a Humvee, grease this joint. One really nice thing about your drain on your Humvee for your diesel fuel is you can always get some diesel fuel pretty easy without having to siphon it. So uh, I'm just draining out enough here. I'm going to go ahead and just soak this thing to begin with. Take the uh, Zerk fitting off and uh, I'm just going to soak it overnight. Let, I'm going to put a little transmission fluid in with that. That's a uh, like creating your own sea foam and uh, see if I can start to get it to free up. Approximately 24, 36, I don't know how many hours later, this thing is looser than a prompt. No, nah, I probably shouldn't say that. This thing is looser than a cut. No, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, let's just say it's nice and loose, free floating about after soaking in a slurry of diesel fuel and automatic transmission fluid. This is the top side that was loose and flexible anyway, and everything's looking good there. So I'm gonna get the uh, Zerk fitting back in it. I'm gonna pump this full, and this is just shame on me. I don't believe I've ever greased this of all the things I've greased. Didn't see it, it was coated in mud. Just didn't see it was here, so we're we're free floating again. That's that's the important thing. Yeah, baby. So now we're just pushing, pushing the grease. Oops. Just pushing the grease out, making a big mess. I am noticing. Look here. It's not leaking out of this joint. 
Well, I wasn't satisfied with what I was seeing just a moment ago, greasing that, because there was no grease coming out of this joint. The others were. And I was using a sort of a champagne cream colored uh, grease at that time. I switched over to a red grease, heated it with the torch very carefully on this joint, which was not plain, and then I quenched it in the diesel fuel after I got it good and hot multiple times and blew air through it, pushed it, and now I know that everything is greased because I can see the red is beginning to come out. So this joint is as greasy through and through as it's going to get. Let's go ahead and put this son of a gun back in there and try it out. All right, this is uh, going to wrap up the video. This is the steering I'm used to, and this is how it was before things started getting wacky. So um, that's working nice, acting like it's powered, like it ought to be. And it's tight. Got our new joints up here. I had an opportunity, obviously, to check out the wheel bearing hubs, upper and lower, upper and lower ball joints, they feel good. That'll be a project for another day when they wear out. Uh, but anyway, good learning lesson here that make sure and grease those joints, especially if you've been uh, water fording with your Humvee. That lower one's a little tricky to get to. You'll have to kind of turn the steering, look up there, but go ahead and make sure that you grease it because if your shaft locks up like this, it's not fun. And you could end up replacing unnecessary parts when it's just a matter of keeping it greased and cleaning it up. So I'll catch you guys next time, probably when something else goes bad. Thanks for watching.